NCCR Welding Basics 34108-10. Boilermaker Level 1. So in this one we're going to talk about gas tungsten arc welding, gas metal arc welding, and flux cord arc welding electrodes. My name is Gary A. Pace. I'm a PE CWI out of Katy, Texas, May 2019. None of this material you're going to see word for word in your um, Boilermaker booklet. Um, I've gotten it from other sources, so I'm just giving you the rundown, the Reader's Digest version of what's what material is going to be covered. But it's the same material. Welding is welding, and it's been welding since you know World War II, more or less. So that's where we're headed. I'm going to shadow what they've got in there and give you the information. Where does weld metal come from? I've gotten more mileage out of this slide in various iterations than I think any one man should be able to. But anyways, um, in this PowerPoint presentation, we're going to talk about gas metal arc welding filler material, flux cord arc welding filler material, and gas tungsten arc welding filler material. In a previous slideshow or presentation or module, we talked about shielded metal arc welding, which is the stick welding far on the right side. Two of these processes are very similar in regards to how the filler metal is delivered. Gas metal arc welding and flux cord arc welding are very similar in equipment and delivery of the weld metal to the weld puddle. And there's some similarities between gas tungsten arc welding and gas metal arc welding in regards to the filler metal form. They both use the same filler metal, it's just the difference in the product form. But we'll get into that here in a second. We're going to talk about gas tungsten arc welding electrodes first. Um, we're basically going to go with a solid wire. It's just a piece of wire. I know everybody in here has probably um, seen a barbed wire fence or dealt with a coat hanger or a piece of wire wrapped around something in a, that was shipped somewhere. That's basically what we're talking about using for uh, filler material. So for gas tungsten arc welding, we're not really talking about using it as an electrode. We're talking about using it as a filler material. So that would be in the lower right-hand corner because we're just going to add it. It would be like the guy's going to hold a TIG torch in his hand when he's gas tungsten arc welding, the guy, the person, and he's going to hold it in his hand, and then in his other hand, her hand. Um, in the other hand, the welder is going to have filler material. And the filler material, they're going to add by hand, just dabbing into the weld puddle. Whereas in on the right hand or left hand side, we've got gas metal arc welding, which uses a spool of wire. But these two electrodes, other than the product form, one's in a spool, one's in cut lengths, is the same material. Um, and they use the same nomenclature to identify the material and we'll get into that but we just I just wanted to touch on you know what gas tungsten arc welding looks like a little bit before we get into the nomenclature. Gas tungsten arc welding is an arc welding process in which the heat for welding is developed by an electric arc maintained between a non-consumable tungsten electrode and a workpiece. Protection from atmospheric contamination of the tungsten electrode, the filler metal, the weld puddle, and the adjacent heated areas is achieved by a shielding gas, usually inert, argon or helium, that flows from inside a cylindrical cup that surrounds the electrode. In a majority of applications, gas tungsten arc welding is a completely manual process where the filler metal is fed into the weld puddle by the operator as it is required. Filler metals for GTAW are listed under the same specifications that contain the requirements for gas metal arc welding. While gas tungsten arc welding requires that the filler metal be manually fed into the weld puddle and gas metal arc welding involves a mechanically fed process, the individual nature of each process precludes the use of rimmed steels with its high oxygen content as a filler metal. The difficulty of introducing deoxidizers into the weld puddle 
requires that a previously deoxidized or killed steel be used as the filler metal for both processes. Bottom line is that GTAW and GMAW filler materials are the same thing. The GMAW filler metal comes on spools, reels, or 500 pound barrels, and the gas tungsten arc welding form comes in cut lengths in a box. This is the same welding material from a mechanical property standpoint. The same welding material in regards to chemical analysis of the weld deposit. The only difference is the form that the wire comes in. So for g gas tungsten arc welding and gas metal arc welding, we're going to need a shielding gas. Um, because we're basically welding with a coat hanger and we need to cover that weld pool up with something to protect it from atmospheric contamination. And it's not like shielded metal arc welding, stick welding, where we've got a flux on the outside of the electrode. Here we just got a bare wire, just a piece of wire. So there, if we didn't have shielding gas, our weld puddle would get um, hit with atmospheric contamination and we'd have issues in regards to weld strength, cracking, a whole host of things. So for gas tungsten arc welding and gas metal arc welding, this is how we do it. We have a shielding gas and it's usually argon helium or an argon helium mixture. Sometimes for gas metal arc welding, we use CO2, depending on what the situation is. Gas tungsten arc welding electrodes. As stated earlier, tungsten can withstand higher temperatures than all other metals, but it can also be consumed if the temperature of the arc is too hot. Therefore, there is a limit to the current carrying capacity of tungsten electrodes. This limit, together with the heating characteristics of the work, should be taken into account before the start of welding operations. The size of the electrodes is determined by the current, which in turn is a function of the material thickness. Also note, tungsten electrodes for gas tungsten arc welding can be identified by painted end marks. We're going to hit this one twice, but gas tungsten arc welding electrode classification, we've got ER, the E stands for electrode, the R stands for rod. That means we can either use it as we can run electricity through it like we would for gas metal arc welding or we can use it as and add it as a rod in either oxyacetylene welding or gas tungsten arc welding. The 70, the 70 just stands for the ultimate tensile strength. How much force does it take to pull this apart? The S tells us it's a solid wire um, I know you guys get sick of me telling you this probably, but it's basically a coat hanger. And then the six is the chemical composition. You got one through whatever, and it'll tell you the composition, how much manganese, how much um, silicon, how much whatever other um, chemicals that they've, elements that they've put in there to alter the chemistry of that filler material to give you the outcome you want. So the six is just telling us basically how much silicon and maybe manganese and the range of those elements that we can have in that material. And, you know, depending on how dirty a steel you're running on, some people run ER70S6, some run 70S3, 70S4. Just depends on what kind of steel you're running on, how dirty the steel is. And when I say dirty, a lot of times you'll get... Um, steel out of and I'm not picking on China but sometimes you'll get steel out of Chinese mills and it might not be the, as quality as some of the other steels you might encounter um, China makes 50 some percent of the steel so odds are you're going to run out run into um, steel from a Chinese mill some of it's better than others some of it's just really substandard so you're going to have to have a different um, a different weld filler material to compensate for the chemistry of that uh, base metal, the dirty steel. So that's why that six is on the end there. GTAW filler metal classification. The ER stands for electrode or filler rod. The 70 is the strength of the weld. In the case of mild steel, the weld has a minimum of 70,000 pounds of tensile strength per square inch of weld. The S stands for a solid wire. Since the, solid, the wire is solid, it always needs a the form of a shielding gas. The six indicates the chemical composition of a solid electrode. GMAW electrodes. So this is what we're looking at. We're talking about wire feed electrodes. Um, 
you're gonna you you have a spool of wire, and this process is different than flux cord arc welding, and this is just wire. It's I say it every time, but it's basically a coat hanger. There's nothing on the inside. It is just wire that has been necked down to a specific diameter. These wires have a specific chemical composition for because the metallurgical properties that we want in that weld metal to join metal A to metal B. So this is what it looks like. It looks like it's copper. This specific wire looks like it's copper. It's not. It's just a steel wire with a thin copper coating on the outside. The copper coating is on the outside to keep the material from rusting. Um, different manufacturers have a couple of different methods to keep the material from rusting or oxidizing. But a common way is to just put a very thin layer of copper on it. This also helps the electricity flow through the electrode a little better. And um, I think it adds, it is lubricated. It doesn't gum up the liner of the gun near as much. But this is what we're talking about when we're talking about gas metal arc welding electrodes. Just a quick rehash on um, gas metal arc welding and flux core arc welding equipment. This is the equipment we're talking about. You got a power supply, you got a wire feeder that's feeding the wire into a gun, and that's how you weld. Um, it's a little different than stick welding or gas tungsten arc welding, but this is what we're talking about. We're talking about wire feeder, um, a wire process. Let's just call it basically, it's a wire feeder process. So on that wire, you could either have a flux cord electrode, which is an electrode that's got a flux on the inside, a powder, that's going to give you some um, char different characteristics than just using a plain wire. Or if you're using um, gas metal arc welding, you just use wire. Um, it's just a solid wire. And I always use the coat hanger analogy or just a wire like you'd see on a fence. That's pretty much what it is. And there's some different additives to it and they treat it, but it's basically a mild steel, steel wire. And depending on what you're welding, they'll modify it, add carbon, add manganese, and um, they'll give you a chemistry that'll match what you're trying to weld together. But this is what the equipment looks like when we're talking about gas metal arc welding or flux cord arc welding equipment. Filler metals for gas metal arc welding. Filler metals for the GMAW process are listed under the same specifications that contain the requirements for gas tungsten arc welding. Like I said, it's the exact same material. It's just what way they package it for you. You can see we've got, for gas tungsten arc welding, it's just cut lengths. It's basically like a straightened out coat hanger or a really thick piece of barb wire that's without the barbs on it. It's just a really thick piece of wire. And it, I think they come in 36 inch lengths. So you just use those and feed it into the weld puddle if you're gas tungsten arc welding. The same material for gas metal arc welding, instead of cutting it into 36 inch chunks, they'll put it in 33 pound spools. Sometimes for gas metal arc welding, for manufacturing situations, like let's say if you're up working for John Deere or Caterpillar or something and you're welding and they've got a robot or you've got a guy that's welding on something, they'll buy it in 500 pound spools if you know you're gonna use the same filler material over and over and over and over. Change it, it saves a lot of time than on changing out these 33 pound spools. I've worked at companies where we bought our filler metal in 500 pound spools and also in um, thousand pound spools. It came like a big spool of thread, thousand pounds of wire, just plunk. There it is. And then a guy doesn't have to change it out, the welder doesn't have to change it out every couple of hours. That's you know, if he's got to change the wire out consistently, that's man hours and he's got to get tools and he's down and he's got to do all this stuff. This way it just takes that change out time and you just do it once. So filter metals for gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten arc welding. They're, they're the same from a chemical metallurgical specification standpoint. The only difference is, is how they're being delivered to you. Are they cut lengths for gas tungsten arc welding? Or are they, is it in a spool or a drum or a barrel or another situation like that, such as you could get for gas metal arc welding? 
This is a welding gun for gas metal arc welding, flux cord arc welding. I'm kind of doing a rehash because, um, you know, if you're not intimately familiar with welding, you're probably, this is just an alphabet soup to you. So basically, gas metal arc welding and flux core arc welding are wire feed processes. And you have a gun, you got that little blue trigger on there, you pull the trigger, wire's going to come out, electricity's going to flow, gas is going to flow, and you're going to be able to weld. So when we talk about gas metal arc welding and flux cord arc welding, this is the process we're talking about. So even though gas metal arc welding electrodes and flux cord arc welding electrodes look the same in regards to they're both spools of wire, the fundamental difference is one is a solid wire, and I've been preaching this and will continue to preach it, one is a solid wire. One is basically a coat hanger or just a piece of wire that you would find on a spool, like barbed wire. The other one is uh, a specialized wire that's got a flux or a powder on the inside. You kind of got to cut it specially and you know manipulate it a little bit to get a good look at it. But yeah, there's a big difference. One's a solid wire and one has a flux on the inside. So even though they come in spools and at a distance they look the same, they're two different processes in regards to you know the composition of the filler metal and the how it works um, one's got a flux on the inside that helps shield the weld pool from atmospheric contamination and the other one just uses a gas shielding to protect the weld puddle from atmospheric contamination so this is the thing that we need to keep in mind as we go forward Here's what the electrode classification looks like for gas metal arc welding. Um, American Welding Society specification AWS A5.18. So we've got the E and the R. You'll notice this is different than like um, E7018 that we used in um, the shielded metal arc welding. ER, we've got the E, which is electrode, which means we can run electricity through it. And we've also got the um, nomenclature R in there, which means it's a rod. So we've got E and R. So we can either run electricity through this material to get it to function as a filler material, or we can add it to the weld puddle separately. Either gas welding, um, like oxy-fuel welding, oxyacetylene welding, we could use this type of filler material. Or we could use it for gas tungsten arc welding, which we're going to talk about. The 70 is the tensile strength. How much strength does it take to pull this stuff apart? Um, the tensile strength. And then S is, tells us it's a solid wire. Basically, it's a piece of wire, coat hanger, barbed wire, whatever you want to use for an analogy. It's just wire. I haven't looked up coat hanger wire for the metallurgical composition, but I'm betting it's probably not too far off this. Um, it would probably work. So it's just the product form. Um, and then you've got this last number on the end that's a six. So it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's just telling you some of the finer points of the chemistry. Generally, it, for like the ER70S series, it's telling you that there's um, a type of uh, how much silicon's in there, manganese, um, the chemical composition. Because when you're gas welding, using MIG welding, sometimes you might be welding on dirty steel. So they found out that different amounts of silicon in the weld metal help float um, deleterious material, crap, um, that might be in the steel, might help float it out of the weld pool, and then it forms a glass on the top. So the silicon goes in there and grabs things and then floats it up to the top in the form of a gas. So this is what our electrode classification looks like. It's similar to what we would use, and this is only for carbon steel. If we go to nickel alloys, like um, something like a uh, hast alloy or an Inconel, those are both trade names like Coke and Pepsi, but um, we would have something that would be like an ER nickel chrome 3 or an ER nickel chrome moly 5. would be. But anyways, this is only for carbon steels. Carbon steels, carbon steels only. We don't use this for um, stainless steels. They've got their own 
um, nomenclature. So this is for carbon steels and carbon steels only. GMAW electrode classification. The ER stands for electrode or filler rod. 70 is the strength of the weld. In the case of mild steel, the weld has a minimum of 70,000 pounds of tensile strength per square inch of weld. The S stands for a solid wire. Since the wire is always solid, it always needs a form of shielding gas. Remember we talked about shielding gas? Um, six indicates the chemical composition of the weld electrode. We're going to take a look at that on the next slide. GMAW electrode compositions. So this is out of one of the AWS specifications. And you can see on the far right hand side or left hand side, we've got the AWS classification. So for this one that I've outlined in red is ER70S6. Remember, this filler material can be either used as an electrode in gas metal arc welding, or it can be used in a as a rod form, which means we're not running electricity through it in gas tungsten arc welding or oxy fuel welding. So you can see. Um, up at the top, we've got our weight percent, carbon, manganese, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, nickel, chrome, moly, vanadium. Well, this tells us the one I outlined is ER70S6. And you'll notice the difference between 70S6 and 70S3 is the amount of manganese in there. So that would be the main difference between those two filler materials is the amount of manganese that's in there and the amount of silicon, right? So these will allow you, this will give, these um, subtle variations in the filler material chemistry have a different effect on the weld pool and the cleaning action and impact strength. And, you know, there's a couple of subtle differences in there between these two um, filler materials as you can see, but there's a whole list of these um, for whatever filler materials you're gonna purchase. But this is where you would go to find, you know, what the material is. Odds are it's probably not gonna be your job as a boiler maker. Maybe as you progress up the food chain, you'll need to have this information, but you just need to realize that it exists. And there's people out there that do care about this and they're the ones writing the weld procedures but this is where the information comes from so when we're talking about flux cord arc welding electrodes this is what the side view would look like um, if we looked at it if we could just take a slice you're just going to see a, a metal sheath it's like a metal ribbon basically it's a roll your own cigarette you know you got the core of tobacco and then you got the outside of paper Except here we've got the outside being a thin layer of steel. And then on the inside there's alloying materials, flux, and slag formers. It looks very similar to gas metal arc welding electrode. GMAW electrode. And one is a solid wire and one has flux on the inside. The welding equipment utilized to, for both of these processes is the same wire feeder, power supply, welding gun. Uh, the thing you're going to change out is the gas and the feed rolls, but for the most part, it's the same process. The mechanics of delivering the filler material to the weld pool are fundamentally the same, but the product form is a little different as far as the electrode. One's a solid wire and one's got flux on the inside of the wire. The flux cord arc welding process, also known as FCAW, uses a tubular electrode wire filled with flux. The arc established between the electrode wire and the base metal, as in all arc welding processes, provides the heat for welding. There are two variations, one using auxiliary shielding gas from an external source, the other with self-shielding. The core of the tubular electrode contains fluxing, deoxidizing, and at times alloying additions. The molten slag that floats on the liquid weld metal provides physical protection from atmospheric contamination. You can see the, these two processes in the two diagrams here. We have on the left the gas shielded flux core arc welding process where you're using a, a 
flux and the gas to shield the weld metal. And then on the right, you've got the self-shielded flux core arc welding. The self-shielded flux core arc welding is pretty much, and I'm overgeneralizing here, it's the shielded metal arc welding process, stick welding, turned inside out to achieve greater productivity. So you don't have to stop every few inches and change out your electrode. With this process, you can just make a pass and go and then come back and chip off the slag and do it over again. So for flux cord arc welding, this is the different, this is what the process looks like. You have a power supply, you got a cylinder for gas, you've got um, the welding gun, you got a ground clamp so you can complete the uh, the electrical circuit. You got a wire feeder that feeds the wire into the, the gun cable and into the gun that goes on to the weld pool. So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about flux cord arc welding. Very similar equipment, 99% of the time it is the same equipment that you would use for gas metal arc welding. The only thing you're going to do is change out the drive rolls on the wire feeder and you're probably going to change out the gases and the wire feed or the filler material you're utilizing to make the weld. But this is what flux cord arc welding is and this is what we're talking about when we're, this is the process we're talking about. Just a quick recap on flux cord arc welding. Flux cord arc welding is a welding process where we use a wire in a spool generally. We feed it through a wire feeder out through the gun. The electricity, the electrical current that is used to melt the filler material into the weld puddle is supplied by uh, a, a power supply, a big transformer, or there's different variations of how they're going to supply the electricity. It could be an inverter, whatever. Um, so we need a power supply, we need a gun, and we need a wire feeder. This is what we're talking about for flux core arc welding and gas metal arc welding. Basically the same process, a few subtle differences in regards to feed rolls and the gas being used but the wires are going to be different and we're going to touch base on that but this is what we're talking about when we're talking about flux cord arc welding when we're talking about flux cord arc welding you can see we've got two spools of wire here we've got the gas metal arc welding on the far left and then we've got the gap the flux cord arc welding outlined there in red and you're saying, well, it's a couple of spools of wire. What's the difference? Well, flux cord arc welding filler material has a flux on the inside. It's got a powder on the inside that is similar to the powder that we used in stick welding, shielded metal arc welding. It's just to the right of the flux core here. Flux cord arc welding and shielded metal arc welding are basically the same process but turned inside out. They both use a flux for adding uh, chemicals, uh, elements to get different weld chemistry. They use a flux to help shield the weld pool from atmospheric contamination. They're very similar, but flux cord arc welding is a semi-automatic process. You don't have to stop every time you run out of a piece of stick welding material. So flux cord arc welding, you just pull the trigger and go. It's similar to gas metal arc welding, but there's subtle differences between gas metal arc welding and flux cord arc welding. But you can see the product forms that they come in, it's wire. Um, I've had students ask, oh, why we're gonna weld with the copper? The gas metal arc welding wire to the far left, that it looks like it's copper, but it's not. It's just got a really thin layer of copper on it to keep it from um, rusting. But, and that's why it looks like it's a copper. It's not. It's just carbon steel. Like I said, 827 times. It's basically just a coat hanger and it's got a thin layer of copper on it to keep it from rusting. If you're in somewhere, Florida or Alabama or somewhere that's really, really humid, it'll help keep it from oxidizing. So we're going to talk about flux cord arc welding filler material right now. And that would be the one outlined in the red. You can see this one is a little different than the electrode classification for gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten arc welding. So instead of having an ER at the front, we've just got an E. And instead of using the first two numbers 
to designate the tensile strength, we just use the first one, the 7. The 7 just tells us the ultimate tensile strength. And then the 0 is either a 1 or a 0. That next one, the third digit, the third place is either a 0 or a 1. This is like um, with shielded metal arc welding where we've got positions where the ER70S6 for gas metal arc welding, you, it, there's no positions involved. Flux core has positions. So we're either zero for flat or one for all. And then T is for tubular. There's a couple other designations I'm not gonna mention right now that you could use. But, and then you've got a one behind it, which tells you which shielding gas to use. And then it's gonna tell you um, your usability and performance. But this is what a flux cord arc welding electrode classification looks like. And you can look these up and um, if you absolutely needed to. There's books that outline this. The American Welding Society and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers both have a system. It's between the two of them. They have a system for identification of weld filler materials. And um, so this is the nomenclature they use for the identification of flux cord arc welding electrodes. And just like any other of the filler materials, there's electrode compositions, chemistries, um, that need to be followed by the manufacturer to deliver the product. So for this one, it'd be E70X, it could be a 1 or a 2, and then a T and a 7. So... Um, this is the chemistry that you'd need to have to deliver that filler metal with those with that chemical composition. Um, there's books and specifications that outline the recipe that the manufacturer needs to follow in order to deliver this um, filler material with the required chemistries. But you, you're not probably going to run across this too often, but you do need to be cognizant that it does exist, that there are reasons for why the filler metal is what it is and it has a certain chemistry or why we care we care when we're welding metal a to metal b and we have to have a very specific weld metal chemistry to make everything function okay i know it gets tedious i include one of these in about every other um presentation i do but i guess i just want to spread the wealth um, acknowledgements, I poach a lot of this material from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Introduction to Welding Technology and Code Courses, ML12157A587. It's a good starting point. Can teach um, the Canadian deuterium uranium people. Um, HTPS, I'm not going to read that web page. You guys can figure it out. The can do stuff. The U.S. Army's also got a pretty good, um, it's old, but it covers a lot of material. Um, TM 9-237 Welding Theory and Application is a good uh, place to find some high quality welding information. None of it's changed over the last 50 years. But anyways, that's why I always include this is because there might be somebody out there that's looking for some free material, doesn't want to pay for a book, and you want some good high quality welding material. This is it. Questions, comments, or whatever. Um, my name is Gary Pace. I'm a professional engineer, welding engineer, certified weld inspector. I'm out of Katy, Texas. There's my email address and my website. Feel free to drop me a line if you have questions or whatever. I want to chat about welding related or materials or maybe you've got an idea on something I need to cover in a future episode. All right. Take care. GP out.